Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is FreePBX 101 for FreePBX version 15, brand new for 2021. And I think this series will actually last at least throughout 2021. Now, Sangoma has already announced that they are going to soon be releasing a beta of FreePBX 16. But we don't know when, and we don't know when that will actually be in full production after it goes through its beta cycles. So I expect that this tutorial series is going to be good at least through the end of 2021, if not further. In this series, we are going to cover all aspects of designing, installing, and configuring a free PBX version 15 server, whether that's on-premises or hosted. However you want to deploy it, we are going to try to cover all of the bases in this comprehensive series. However, if you want a more in-depth look at FreePBX, especially when it comes to reselling FreePBX to potential customers, make sure you keep an eye on the Crosstalk Solutions YouTube channel for information about our in-person training courses that we do about twice a year. With the next one coming up in actually just about two weeks, but that class has already been filled. If you appreciate this content, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more videos just like this. We put two to three videos out per week on topics ranging from voice over IP to computer networking to product reviews and just other sort of fun tech related stuff. And if you're in the market for any sort of voice over IP products or services, please consider Crosstalk Solutions. We provide not only hardware from our website, but we can also get our hands on any kind of phone or server hardware that you're looking for. We also provide hourly support on free PBX as well as full turnkey free PBX installations where we work with you on the design and then we build, configure, ship, and help you implement a brand new free PBX solution for your organization. With all that being said, let's go ahead and hop right into it. And the place that we want to start is with free PBX planning, because if you are tasked with implementing a new phone system for your organization, that can certainly be a daunting task, right? You, you, there's so much to voice over IP. We're going to try to make the process of planning out your PBX deployment as simple as possible. And this is the same process that we go through with all of our customers when they come to us with needs for you know phones or phone systems or phone services. So here we go, free PBX 101 version 15 deployment planning. Now there are three critical components to any phone system. We're talking about the server, the service, right, your phone lines, and the phones themselves. And as long as you sort of break it into those three categories and figure out the best solution for each, then you're basically done with figuring out what kind of PBX you need to implement. Breaking down these three categories, the server is the brains of the operation, right? This is where free PBX is installed. Typically we see either a bare metal server, a hosted PBX, or a virtualized PBX in some sort of virtual machine host. The service is your connection to the rest of the world. Whether you're utilizing SIP trunking or you have POTS lines or a PRI, that's basically how do you get phone calls from your server out to the rest of the world. Also known as the public switch telephone network or PSTN. Finally, we have phones. Now typically we're talking about hardware phones, but this also encompasses any sort of soft phones that you have installed on your computer desktop or on a smartphone. And we're gonna break these phones down into different categories as well. But let's start off with the server. So how do you pick a server for free PBX? A lot of that depends on the structure of your organization. If you are a single building with you know 50 employees and you're not gonna have many people working from home or anything like that, an on-premises PBX is typically going to be best for those environments, although you could also go with a hosted PBX as well. But the hosted PBX is typically better suited for organizations that are geographically spread out. So for instance, we have a chain of restaurants that we provide a hosted PBX to uh, here in the United States, and each of those restaurants has you know three or four phones, and then they've got like six or seven restaurants. 
they all connect out to a single hosted PBX where each one of those locations has its own inbound and outbound routes. They have their own E911 for dialing uh, emergency services but they can also still dial all of the other restaurants by using internal extensions, not having to go over the public switch telephone network. Then we have a virtual PBX, which is, which is essentially just free PBX running in a virtual machine. We're gonna spend the least amount of time on that because personally, I don't like setting up virtual uh, free PBX in virtual machines. So let's talk about bare metal servers. Now, if you are just learning free PBX, any server, any old computer you have lying around is going to be fine for testing out free PBX. As long as you can install Linux on a server, then you can install free PBX on that server. But if you are installing a server in production for your organization, you're going to want to put a little bit more time and investment into it. Certainly you can buy a server from someone like Dell uh, or HP. Those are going to work just fine. Uh, we also recommend, of course, our own crosstalk servers, which come with free PBX pre-installed. Not only that, they come with a two-year factory warranty standard and the option of adding an extended warranty for up to five years of total coverage on your bare metal server. And then if you're doing a large deployment, and I would consider a large deployment anything that has more than like 100 phones, you're gonna to wanna to consider a server that has server level or enterprise level redundancy built in, such as you know RAID 1 hard drives, redundant power supplies, and perhaps even multiple servers that are set up in a primary and warm spare configuration. The pros and cons of bare metal, right? So number one, you own the hardware. There's no recurring monthly fees or anything like that. After the initial capital investment, that server is yours. You have options for connecting some of the older legacy PSTN connectivity, such as POTS lines or PRI. You can add cards into the server or some of the servers, such as the Crosstalk 715, 716 line of servers, come with FXO ports built into the actual server itself. You can also choose how big or small you want that server to be. And if you look at the servers that we offer, sort of the way that we size the servers is based on not only the number of phones that you can connect to the server, but the number of concurrent calls. Because a phone just sitting idle connected to a server is barely doing anything. Whereas if you have a call in progress, that's what's actually taking away some of the server's resources in terms of CPU and RAM, etc. With bare metal servers, you also have more options for network security, right? You have full control over the LAN or VLAN that the server is placed into, and you control all of the surrounding network infrastructures. Another cool thing about bare metal servers is that all of the phones locally, if you're dialing extension to extension, you're not using any internet bandwidth for those calls whatsoever because they hit the server on your LAN and then they go to another phone on your LAN, never going out to the PSTN or out to the internet at all. Some of the cons of a bare metal server are, of course, there are additional costs in terms of IT administration for maintaining any server hardware that you have in your organization. Uh, there's a little bit more complexity if you need to provide connectivity to the server for satellite offices or remote work at home employees, meaning that there's going to be holes that you have to poke in your firewall or VPN connections that you have to set up. So there's a little bit more complexity in terms of the actual uh, configuration of the server in your LAN. Uh, and of course, hardware breaks eventually, right? We do have two year warranties on all of the crosstalk server hardware, but servers are servers, right? And so not only do servers break, you know, all computers are gonna break at some point. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. On top of that, you should be planning to replace your bare metal servers about every three to five years, which is sort of the standard lifespan of any server hardware that you put into your organization. Quickly, here is a look at the various Crosstalk servers that we offer as of June 2021. We have the Crosstalk 715-716, capable of handling up to 10 concurrent calls, perfect for small offices, and these servers come with onboard FXO or FXS ports for analog con connectivity to either you know, devices such as fax machines or analog connectivity to POTS lines to get you out to the public switch telephone network. One really nice thing about the 715, 716 servers is that you can utilize SIP trunking to take advantage of the cost effectiveness of voice over IP, 
but still maintain one or two POTS lines as backup just in case your internet ever goes down, you're not completely dead in the water with the servers. The Crosstalk 710 bumps it up. There are no onboard FXS or FXO ports, but you get a little bit more power. It's capable of handling up to 100 users or 30 concurrent calls. The Crosstalk 745 can do 150 users or 45 concurrent calls, and you have the option of adding up to eight FXO or FXS ports for analog connectivity. Finally, we have the Crosstalk 760, which can handle up to 500 users or 100 concurrent calls, and it has a dual power supply option as well as RAID 1 hard drives. Uh, and all of these servers are fully compatible with FreePBX and in fact come with FreePBX pre-installed. Next, let's talk about hosted. Okay, so if you don't wanna deal with a bare metal server, hosting is a really viable option for your FreePBX, especially if you are sort of geographically disparate, like I was talking about that restaurant example earlier in this video. So you can install FreePBX on Vulture, you know, DigitalOcean, Amazon, AWS, I know that at least Vulture and DigitalOcean have like one-click installs to get FreePBX onto their platforms. Uh, AWS is a little bit more complicated, but I have seen customers that have done those types of installations. And one of the nice things about hosting a server in the cloud or with one of these cloud providers is that you do have options such as server snapshots, uh, which make it real easy to, you know, take a snapshot and then restore it to a different data center or restore a second copy of PBX or just you know, there's just a lot of options with these hosted providers. If you are going to self-host a free PBX server, I personally would recommend Vulture. They have a really easy one-click installation. In fact, one of the videos, I think it's the third video in this series, I'm going to show you start to finish how to set up a free PBX on Vulture. And that's who we use in the back end for our hosting. And that leads us into the Crosstalk PBX hosting services. So while we do use Vulture in the back end for actually hosting those servers, we provide additional services for your free PBX deployment. So with Crosstalk PBX hosting, which I'll have a link down below if you guys want to check that out, uh, we do monthly free PBX updates, so we keep your server up to date, and we also QA the updates that come out of Sangoma so that we're not just blasting you with all of the latest and greatest stuff that may potentially break the server. We actually test everything first. We have automated snapshots. We have off-site FTP backups. We do a best practice initial setup of free PBX, and there are no monthly contracts. You can cancel your service at any time. So check out Crosstalk PBX Hosting. Again, it's uh, more expensive than doing it yourself, but we're also doing all of the updates and taking backups for you and making sure that that server is well maintained if that's not something that you're interested in taking on yourself. Pros and cons of hosted servers. So the pros, they're very quick to deploy. We can have a hosted server up and running in like an hour and you're ready to take phone calls. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, you can size the server differently, you know, DigitalOcean, Vulture, Amazon, AWS, they all allow you to pick the resources that you want to throw into your hosted server. Uh, great for geographically disparate companies, as I have stated already. Uh, and then snapshot backups make, you know, moving the server between data centers and doing restores and that sort of stuff really easy. The cons, all right, you do not own the hardware. You are subject to the outages of those providers. If they have to take a virtual machine host down, uh, your server is going to be affected by that. It's also more difficult to connect to legacy PSTN providers. So if you have to go with POTS lines, if you have to go with a PRI, a hosted server probably isn't your best option because you have to have local hardware that then connects out to that hosted server for your PSTN connectivity, and it's just sort of too many, you know, cogs in the in the works, if you will. There's too many moving parts and too many things that can go wrong with that type of setup. Another con is that with hosted servers, every single phone call is going to use internet bandwidth. If I call from my desk right here to a phone right here on a hosted server, it's going all the way out to the internet, hitting the PBX, and then coming all the way back into the second phone. So basically an extension to extension call uses twice the amount of bandwidth as just a call that's uh, going out to your cell phone or something like that. It's also highly recommended to have a static IP address at every single one of your locations if you have a hosted PBX. Uh, you can also do it, however, with a dynamic DNS name, though that's not quite as stable as a static IP would be. And then of course, if the internet goes down, 
with your hosted PBX, all of your phones are offline, right? If your phones cannot actually get out to that hosted server, they are going to be offline. But the advantage of having a hosted server in that case versus having a bare metal server where the internet goes down is that if your internet goes down, your phones maybe can't connect out to that hosted server, but the host server can still take calls, right? So you can sort of redirect all calls to voicemail or something like that in the event that your internet is out. Finally, you can run free PBX in a virtual machine environment, though I typically do not recommend this, mostly because a lot of the customers that I've seen that set up free PBX in a virtualized environment really just kind of don't know how to do it right, right? You have to have a lot of knowledge about that virtual machine, how to allocate resources properly, and how to manage the networking properly for your virtual machines in order to successfully deploy free PBX in Hyper-V or Zen or VMware or whatever. Reason being is that you are adding an additional layer of networking. You're adding an additional layer of complexity for a real-time communication protocol, right? So if your networking isn't perfect, or if you don't have the right amount of resources allocated to that server, it's gonna result in call quality issues, which again, more often than not, I see people set up these servers incorrectly. So just in general, unless you really know what you're doing on a virtual machine, I kind of recommend against it. The pros and cons, it's really quick and easy to deploy. It's typically more cost effective than bare metal. Uh, there are actually also redundancy options with virtual machines uh, where you can have you know, two separate sets of the same FreePBX server in sync. Uh, that's a feature of some of the virtual machine software. Uh, and then the cons are you have more IT administrative overhead because you have to manage that virtual machine and it is more difficult to use some legacy PSTN connections. Also, just in general, it's a stronger learning curve because you have to really know your stuff on virtual machines, then you have to really know your stuff on free PBX and voice over IP. All right, let's move into the service. So we've talked about the servers. Let's talk about the service, right? Your connection to the outside world, your connection to the PSTN or public switch telephone network. These days, especially with free PBX, most of our clients are going with SIP trunking, right? Voice over IP, SIP trunking. Uh, but here in the US, especially, there are essentially three sort of main types of PSTN connectivity that we see. POTS lines, which stands for plain old telephone service, right? That's just your standard copper line like you have at your house or probably used to have at your house because not so many people have actual lines at their homes anymore. Uh, then we have PRI. So a PRI is another type of circuit that you can get for your organization. It's essentially 23 phone lines in one cable. Then we have SIP trunking. Today, this is absolutely hands down the most common type of service that we see. So let's talk about POTS lines. And I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on POTS and PRI because we don't see those nearly as often as we used to, but essentially there are still areas, especially more rural areas, where sometimes the only option that you have are POTS lines, or perhaps your internet service is not good enough to properly handle voice over IP or maybe you have a wireless ISP as your provider and the sort of changes in latency from the wireless ISP provider uh, could result in bad call quality for voice over IP. So maybe POTS might be your only option. Typically with a POTS lines, you're gonna either have to have a server that has the FXO ports built in, very similar to this 716 server that I have on the desk right behind me, or you're gonna to have to put a card in the server, or the third option is you have what's called an analog gateway. Typically, we work with the Sangoma Vega gateways, which allow you to connect your POTS lines into that appliance, and then that appliance connects over your network to the, the phone server itself. Now, for mission-critical PBX systems, one of the ways that I do like utilizing POTS lines, so say you have a school or a hospital, something like that, you can always utilize POTS as a backup line, right? So you can use voice over IP for all of your standard inbound and outbound calling, but if your internet connection goes down, you still have POTS lines plugged into the server for backup. And again, this is typically something that we see with mission critical deployments like schools and hospitals. All right, so pros and cons of POTS lines, easy to migrate from the old server to the new. You just unplug the POTS, server from the, old ser the POTS line from the old server, plug it into the new. They're very, very reliable. Although, interesting fact, a lot of times these days, POTS lines are delivered over your internet circuit, right? So sometimes, while they're typically very reliable, old copper POTS lines are very reliable, uh, sometimes 
with these newer service where you get internet and phone bundled together, if the internet goes down, your POTS line is also gonna be down because it's riding that same internet circuit. Cons, they're expensive, right? POTS lines can range anywhere from like 25 to $40 or more per month, and that doesn't account the actual usage. That's just for the privilege of having that line in your organization. Uh, they don't have a lot of options for managing caller ID. So if you have like four POTS lines, you can't send calls out as your company's main phone number because your caller ID is gonna be whichever POTS line that call happened to go out on. And then there's also possible wiring complications. You know, you have to deal with 66 blocks uh, or extending your POTS lines to where the PBX is and all sorts of stuff like that. Now PRIs, we actually do see more often for larger deployments. Uh, and I actually like PRIs in that they're very easy to move from one server to the other, just like POTS lines, you just unplug them from one server, plug them into the other. Uh, PRIs are essentially 24 channel lines where 23 of the channels are for voice and the last channel, the 24th channel is for data, right? Such caller ID and whatnot. We see PRIs most here in the US as well as Japan. Uh, everywhere else in the world, Europe, South America, typically they have what's called an E1 line instead of a PRI. An E1 line is very similar, but instead of, but it's 30 channels uh, of voice and uh, two channels of data. Now, just like the POTS lines, oftentimes PRIs are riding an internet circuit and then they convert it to a PRI with like an AdTran box or something at your location. So you gotta ask your provider, like is this PRI susceptible to internet outages? And if it is, you might as well just switch over to SIP at that point. PRIs terminate to the server, typically through a PCI card in the server. Uh, they come in like all sorts of different flavors, one port, two port, four port, uh, or, you can terminate them with a, uh, a PRI gateway, much the same as an analog gateway. Uh, we typically use the Sangoma Vegas for that purpose. So pros and cons of your PRI, it's easy to migrate from an old server to a new server. They're very reliable and typically they're not affected by internet outages, but again, your mileage may vary on that. The cons are that they're really expensive, right? PRI lines, you got 23 channels of voice they're typically in the range of $500 to $750 per month. Uh, and of course you have additional expenses in terms of the cards that go in the server uh, or the gateway appliance itself. And there's a bit of a learning curve uh, to configure a PRI in FreePBX, but really it's not that bad. All right, my favorite, okay, SIP trunks. I love SIP trunking because this is where I can typically save my customers a ton of money over their existing solutions but there's all different kinds of SIP service, right? You have per minute SIP service, that's what we call metered. That's basically a SIP trunk that gets connected to your server. So when I say SIP trunk, I'm just talking about your phone line, essentially your phone line out to the public switch telephone network. So a SIP trunk gets installed in your server and all you do, you don't really pay for anything except for the minutes that you use. Um, and we'll talk about the three different providers that I recommend. One provider that's typically metered only is VoIP.ms, uh, and that's who we usually go for. Uh, we go with for like smaller deployments where you know they have a, a smaller amount of minutes where a per minute plan makes the most sense from a cost perspective. Then we have per channel SIP trunking providers. This is where you have typically a set number of channels. You buy like five channels, which means you can do like five concurrent calls. And a lot of times those channels will come with unlimited minutes or a certain amount of bundled minutes in that package. Then you have enterprise SIP trunking. This is what you're gonna get from like Charter or Comcast or Level 3 or one of the big providers where they're actually delivering to you a dedicated circuit specifically for SIP trunking uh, or specifically connecting your phone system out to the rest of the world. Now, having that dedicated circuit is great because you can actually guarantee call quality past your firewall all the way out to that provider's location before it gets out to the PSTN. They will often give you SLAs for quality and uptime uh, if that's something that your organization absolutely needs. The downside is that they're very expensive, right? So you're paying for that SLA 
As far as registration, SIP registration is typically done one of two ways, either IP authentication, where they're sending all their traffic to your IP address, and you're sending all of your traffic to their IP address. So you're just authorizing the two IPs on either side. Or you can use SIP registration, which is a username and password that you put into your phone system. It then reaches out and registers the SIP trunk to whatever provider. So pros and cons of SIP trunking. SIP trunking is really cost effective, right? In most cases, you're gonna save a lot of money with SIP trunking versus something like POTS lines or PRI. It's very quick to deploy. You can have a SIP trunking up and running in half an hour if you wanted. That includes signing up with someone and getting it working. Uh, very powerful caller ID options. You can set the caller ID on all of your outbound calls. So you can basically say, every single call, I want to be this specific caller ID, or I want this phone to dial out with this caller ID and that phone to dial out with that caller ID, right? So just really powerful. And we're gonna cover all of that as part of this series. And then of course, there's E911 options, which are great for businesses with multiple locations. Now, cons of SIP trumping, trunking, it's not suitable for all customers. Sometimes you just don't have a reliable internet connection and so SIP isn't going to work for you. Uh, it is susceptible to internet outages and the setup can be complicated, right? So a lot of SIP trunking providers that you go with don't have really great instructions for how to set up their service with something like free PBX. So you wanna look for that documentation ahead of time before you sign up for a provider. Do they provide clear, concise documentation for like, these are the steps you need to take to set up our service with your you know, open source PBX system. And then not all SIP providers are equal, right? I see so many times where people just want to go with the absolute cheapest SIP provider that they can possibly find, but just like anything, you get what you pay for, right? If you go with the cheapest SIP trunking provider, don't come to me complaining about how they're out all the time or they've got problems or whatever the case may be. So our preferred SIP trunking vendors, of course, number one, Crosstalk SIP, right? We would love to have you on Crosstalk SIP. The benefits of Crosstalk SIP is that we are good for medium to large vanilla deployments. So we sell our SIP trunks in channel plans, right? So we have a five channel plan, that's for five concurrent calls. We have a 10 channel plan, that's for 10 concurrent calls. Those are our two most popular packages. We also have unlimited if you want unlimited channels. With our packages, we include a number of minutes. I think it's 4,000 minutes with the five channel plan and 8,500 minutes with the 10 channel plan. So it's really easy, clear, concise, consistent monthly billing that you can rely on. It's gonna be just a, you know around this amount every month. There's gonna be no surprises on your monthly bill. And also as an added bonus for Crosstalk SIP, we will dial into your server and set up the SIP trunk for you utilizing all best practices. Another really excellent SIP trunking provider is Clearly IP. We personally use Clearly IP for our medium to large customers that have complex deployments, schools and hospitals, and just anyone that's like sort of got a very big or more complex deployment. And the reason we do that is because they have hands down the industry best E911 compliance. So. As of 2021, if you are watching this video and you are going to be setting up a new phone system, you have to be compliant with the new Carey's Law and Ray Bomb Act regulations for E911 or dialing out to the emergency authorities, right? You have to be compliant with that. It's now law. And Clearly IP not only makes that super easy, but they make it really, really cost effective for these complicated deployments. Like imagine a hotel where you've got five floors of a hotel and 10 you know, hotel rooms per floor. Well, it's possible with Carey's Law and Ray Bomb Act that you now have to have a separate E911 address for every single room in that hotel. And with most providers, you basically need to pay for that with a DID. It's gonna cost you like $2.50 per room. It's absolutely outrageous the way that most SIP trunking providers do it. Clearly IP has a really great way of minimizing those expensive expenses for those sort of larger, more complex deployments. And then finally, for our small scale deployments, we typically go with VoIP.MS. They are fully metered. You just pay per minute. Uh, you know, you add in 20 bucks and when your 20 bucks gets low, you add in another 20 bucks, right? So it's no monthly commitment. It's just you put some money in and it starts to deduct 
cash from your bank, if you will, uh, per minute until you are at a zero balance. I've also done a setup video on VoIP.ms. If you are interested in any of these SIP trunking providers, I would absolutely appreciate it if you use our referral code. I will have all of that information down in the description of this video. All right, let's move on to our third and final category, phones, right? Phones are important. What kind of phone are you gonna have on everyone's desk? What kind of phone are you gonna have for the receptionist? What kind of phone are you gonna have for the break room? So when I'm talking to customers about what type of phones we're gonna use, I break them into four categories. We've got receptionist or power user phones. These are phones that have a lot of buttons, a lot of functionality. Perhaps you can have a sidecar module for receptionists so that they can see the status of all of the extensions in your organization. Then we've got standard user phones. These are phones that are basically gonna be going on most people's desks. Then we have utility phones. Now utility phones are phones for the break room or the warehouse or basically anywhere where you need a phone but it doesn't need to have a ton of functionality. And then finally we have our miscellaneous phones. Miscellaneous phones are gonna be things like cordless handsets. If you're an IT guy that roams around and you wanna have a cordless handset or conference room phones or paging systems or paging speakers, these all sort of fall into that last category. So important considerations when you're picking phones, right? Compatibility with free PBX. Not all phones are fully compatible with free PBX. And typically what we're talking about are the applications that run on the phones themselves. So applications for setting your call forwarding or setting your find me, follow me, or logging in and out of queues or checking your visual voicemail from the phone itself, right? Some phones do not have those capabilities at all and other phones do. So if you are picking phones that don't have that type of functionality, you're really handicapping yourself and limiting what you can actually do and what your users can do to make the phone system really beneficial for them. Then we've got build quality, right? You don't wanna buy junk phones, right? That's the same with anything. And then finally, price. Some phone brands are super overpriced, right? Cisco phones are way overpriced. Digium phones are way overpriced, right? I like to bring down the price to where you're not paying upwards of $400 per handset. That's absolutely ridiculous. And then finally, standardize, right? If you are installing phones for your own organization, or especially if you're installing phones on behalf of customers, Find phones that you really like and standardize on those phones because you don't want to be out there supporting a thousand different makes and models of phones. As far as our own Crosstalk phones, we have a number of models that you can choose from. You can check them all out at crosstalksolutions.com. All of our phones are 100% compatible with free PBX and they feature a two year factory warranty by default. So we have the Crosstalk 270, which is for receptionists or power users. You can have an optional sidecar. It has Wi-Fi. it has Bluetooth. You can have a wireless headset if you want. Really, really great phone. We have the Crosstalk 250, which is excellent for standard users. It's got plenty of button functionality for all of those apps that I was talking about. Then we have the Crosstalk 230, which has not as many buttons, smaller display screen. That's what you're gonna to wanna to put in the break room or the warehouse or wherever. All of our phones have full color displays and gigabit pass-through ports because where you put a phone, you might also wanna put a computer. So it's nice to have that secondary ethernet port on the back of the phone to provide network connectivity to whatever PC is near that phone. And then of course, we also have a wide range of other types of phones, cordless handsets and Wi-Fi phones and conference room solutions, et cetera. You can check out all of our phones at crosstalksolutions.com. Just click on the store and click on phones. Okay, so that's a lot of information, all right? Hopefully you guys have everything that you need to properly plan the deployment of your own phone system. And the next videos that we're gonna do are how to install free PBX on a bare metal server and in a hosted environment. Okay, we will see you guys in the next video.